Hey, this is BT, and this is my MotoGP review 2014 of Mugello. Uh, probably one of the most beautiful circuits there is. I can honestly say that because I was there. I actually went to Mugello, and it was the, probably the greatest vacation I've ever had in my life. And I do mean my wonderful, beautiful life that I live. It has been the most beautiful vacation ever. Uh, that is how motorcycle racing or just racing should be in the middle of nowhere. And you come up on it like, ha, ha, ha. And it's nestled in the Tuscany Valley. And uh, it's just, it, it's everything you think it is and then some, you know, and that's what it is. Uh, so let's get right to it, man. Moto3, I know you guys get sick of hearing me say this. Jack Miller is a star in the making. You hear me? Jack Miller is a star in the making. And he and Fanati will have, they will be the modern, they, they're the future Rossi Stoner. Why am I yelling? I have no idea. But they are the future Rossi and stoner uh, of the future. They really are. And, and uh, if you didn't see the race, Jack Miller, uh, he cooked it, uh, stood the bike up, and took out Marquez and Benini, and uh, they went out. He was assessed two penalty points, and this is why you love Jack Miller. He said, wow, I thought I'd be assessed more after I started cursing. So he cursed at the official, <laughs> expecting more penalty points. And he has a point in the sense of Fanati only got one when he ran into Jack Miller, and Jack Miller got two. Why is that? He goes, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Basically, what he said, there's no rhyme or reason to it, and he's right. So he got two penalty points, and he was pissed. He even said, I'm pissed off. So that's why you got to love Jack Miller, man. He's honest. Uh, he likes to have fun. He plays around. I mean, he is, he's what every kid should be. He's just a fun, practical joker, and when it's time to get down to business, he gets down to business. And uh, you got to love the kid. I remember I, was, I wasn't critical of him. I just said during the, when Argentina happened and Fanati booted him out of the way, I said, hey, man, that's racing. And he basically admitted that. Maybe he saw this uh, review and uh, saw what I said about him, which I doubt. But anyway, Jack Miller, I love you. If you don't like Jack Miller, watch the race. You will become a Jack Miller fan. I love this kid. He's going to be the future of Australian racing. So Moto3, great race as always. Congratulations to Venati, an Italian winning in Italy at the Mugello. That's, that's, uh, you can't beat that. It'd be like, um, huh. It'd be, I guess, LeBron James winning a championship in Cleveland, although he left Cleveland. Nah, I didn't get a chance to do any, um, any comparisons. So anyway, he won in Italy. You can't beat that. And he painted his bike in, a, in the Italian flag. How awesome is that? So uh, anyway, so congratulations, Fanati. Great race. Uh, Moto2, you know, you got to give it to... Uh, I always said Tito Rabat is going to win the championship. I still think he's going to win the championship. But... Man, the development, I guess there's no, I guess no pun intended, I said but, uh, Tito Rebut, but, so uh, Tito Rebut, Rebut, Tito Rebut, anyway, um, Salome, Louis Salome and Jonas Folger, you gotta give those guys credit, last year they were on Moto3, and you think that learning curve would take a while, Louis Salome has caught on very well. So is Jonas Folger getting a pole. Congratulations to those guys. They put up a great fight, but um, you knew it was going to was going to take him in the end. I mean, you just knew that. But great job to him. Uh, Vinales finished ninth. I thought he uh, finished a little better than that. And this year, I see it coming down. I think we're about still going to win. But uh, as far as the runner-up, I, I, I don't know. It's going to be close. I tell you what, Louis Salome, give him credit and give Jonas Folger credit for uh, 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 shortening that gap between Moto3 and Moto2 and catching on. Those guys do a great job. On to Moto GP is what you guys want to hear about anyway. That race was one for the ages. As they say in Italy, mamma mia. And that's what that race was like. It reminded me of uh, 2009 uh, Rossi and Lorenzo. But this time it was Lorenzo and Marquez. And if you think about it, this, this rivalry could go on for the next at least three years because Lorenzo is basically in his prime. And he's at least at least three more years. He takes care of his body. Uh, knock on wood with everything else. You know what I'm trying to say. Knock on wood with everything else. Um, this rivalry could go on for ages. And I think it's going to be great for the racing, great for the fans, especially for the fans. Uh, Lorenzo, somehow he got the lead. And usually when he gets the lead, he's gone. Marquez took after him. And then he chased him. And you thought it was going to be like Argentina where he just stayed behind him and made him go, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. and eventually he made a mistake. Lorenzo did make a mistake, and for a, a little bit, he almost gapped Marquez. Marquez even said it. He thought about the year before when uh, he slid out, and Marquez, he thought about that because his bike wasn't feeling well with the front end, but he kept after him, and then he passed him. Lorenzo passed him back. They got close. I think they touched a couple times, and, uh, you know, they, they both kind of don't like each other, although I think it's more Lorenzo to Marquez. Marquez, to me, is like just he's that guy who at game face is turned on, Hey, he'll batter you to the end, 
all the way, uh, fair and square. Sometimes it might be a little bit, I mean, he might take you high. He might take you a little hot in and hit you, whatever. But after it's all over, he's back to being Mark Head, a 21-year-old kid who's happy to be there, who uh, chases women or whatever at the after party. He might be that Mark Head. But until then, uh, and then he turns it off. And then, But I don't think Lorenzo ever turns it off. I think he, t- he takes it personal. And I think in the rivalries more, I think Lorenzo doesn't like Marquez. And Marquez is like, hey, whatever. Did you look at the standings? I am 6-0. and oh. He should have went by him. When Lorenzo beats him, which I think he will this year, Marquez just still should drive by and go, That's what he should have did. Man, just to be a jerk, he should have did it. He, ro- he should have rolled by him after the race was over instead of shaking hands. He should have went, that's what he should have did. But he didn't, and uh, that would be kind of a jerk movie to do. But man, I'd, I'd love it if you would have done that. I thought it was a great race. Um, and you know what? So people were missing out on You got to get the MotoGP uh, package, the video pass package, if you have an iPad like I do. <laughs> you got to get the iPad and get the video pass package. It is incredible. You can get. Uh, you should get the multi-screen um uh, the multi-screen package because we're missing out on great races in the back of the pack. Carl, Carol Abraham finished 12th. He's doing a great job this year, but nobody knows about it because we're, we're too much too busy watching the front of the race, which the front of the race was incredible. It was a great race. It was hot. It was everything you wanted it to be. And Rossi finished third. He got a podium. He got a bad start. He finished. T- I mean, he started off 10th. He got a. Uh, he actually had to get a good start, but he, he was so far behind after he picked off all those people that you know he, he was working from the back and he couldn't. He couldn't work his way up that much. I mean, once once Marquez and Lorenzo get more than a second on you. It, it's done. It's a done deal. So congratulations to Rossi getting a podium at Mugello, especially after all he went through with the with the lost Ducati years. It's kind of like an idiot in the cruisers, you know, the lost tapes that people wonder what happened to him. That's what Rossi was with the Ducati years. And uh, I felt so bad for him, you know, all people came out to watch him. But this time it was great. Rossi's back. Lorenzo's back. He's back in shape. You know, he's like a little pudgy in the beginning of the year, like, like Lorenzo, a little Pillsbury. <laughs> like you wanted to punch him in the stomach, like, <laughs> but now he's like, Hey, what's that? Oh, that's muscle. And that's what Lorenzo's like. He's muscle now. They had to take his suit out a little bit uh, because his, his uh, shoulders were muscled up. Now, he went to three surgeries during the offseason. So he couldn't get his fitness like he wanted to. That's why he was a little pudgy, like the little Pillsbury Doughboy. But like the little Yamaha Doughboy. Like, <laughs> the little Yamaha Doughboy is what I'm going to call it. But now he's back in shape. Lorenzo's back. Marquez is healthy. Marquez is only, is only, is only going down. A couple of times. I don't. I think he's only going down maybe once or twice this year. So he's healthy, as far as we know. Um, Ross, he's healthy. I mean, so these guys are healthy, except for Danny. We talk about Pedrosa, and I always been critical of Pedrosa. You don't realize he has. If you look at his arm, he has all these stitches from his arm pump surgery. So, man, Danny's gutted it out, and I don't. I think that surgery. I, I don't think he took it. Uh, I don't think he had, had, had a, enough time to let it heal. So Danny's in some pain. So shout out to Danny for putting it in, and shout out to Stefan Brado, who took a brutal high. He took two brutal high sides, one in warm up and one in the race. I mean, it wasn't his fault in the race because uh, uh, Crutchlow's bike slid across the track and hit him, and it was brutal to watch. So, shout out to Stefan. Hope you feel better, buddy. And uh, before I get out of here, uh, shout out to uh, the riders that lost their lives um, at the Northwest 200, Simon Andrews, and at the uh, Isle of Man TT to Bob Price and Cal and Carl Harris. Uh, you know, we always say they died doing what they love doing. Uh, I like to say he uh, they lived what they like do- love doing. They lived what they love doing. So. It's tragic, but, you know, they are uh, uh, doing what made them happy. And uh, so God bless those guys. Uh, also, coming up, we got uh, the Catalonia coming up next week. Catalonia GP. I can't wait for that. Two Spanish two Spanish warriors going at it with Marquez and uh, and Lorenzo. And I would love it if Rossi won. I don't know how, but if Rossi, like, if they was two, a two-person battle and they both went in too hot and Rossi went in on the bottom. Nobody gets hurt. I don't want anybody to slide out or anything like that. I want Rossi to win fair and square. That'd be great. But racing is better than ever on MotoGP. Thanks for watching. Uh, any uh, comments, whatever, that'd be great because, you know, I'm just doing this by myself. Uh, I listen or whatever, uh, your criticisms or your slap on the back. So we're like, eh, you know, I just took out 10 minutes of your life. So I hope, uh, I hope it was entertaining for you at least. Anyway, give Moto3 a try. Greatest in racing. I uh, can't wait to see what uh, Jack Miller and Panati are going to do in, uh, in, uh, in Spain. So it's going to be great. Catalonia GP coming up. Thanks for watching. Uh, Marquez, Lorenzo, it should be one for the ages. Thanks for watching. I'm BT on MotoGP. Uh, Magella Review 2014. I'll see ya. Peace.